So if you're like me, when you hear the term theme emulation, what usually comes to mind is retro. You know, that nostalgic feeling that takes us back to our childhood. But then what if you're not a 80s kid or a 90s kid? Would you care that much for it? I don't think so. Now, I'm not going to bore you by explaining what the film emulation process is, but I will tell you this. That retro look came about because movies were shot on this celluloid film. In fact, that's where the term film comes from. But then today, movies are now being filmed on this digital. Now, it's much clearer and cleaner, right? But for some reason, filmmakers don't want this cleaner, sharper image. For movies now, I'm not talking about commercials and other kinds of content. When it comes to movies, we're always looking for a way to take this clean, sharp digital image and make it look more like retro, more like film. Now, if you were to ask different filmmakers, they have their various reasons for wanting to do this. But I've done a little bit of a research and I think it comes down, my opinion, I think it comes down to one main reason and that is to evoke emotion. Now, I'm not talking about that nostalgic um, feeling that comes with retro, uh-uh. There's something about a movie that has been shot on film that gives a certain feeling of this thing can live forever. It's a classic. Regardless Regardless of how long it has been made, when you watch it, it still feels relevant. And that in itself evokes a certain emotion in us. And I think, in my opinion, that is the fundamental thing that filmmakers are looking for. And if you can evoke a particular emotion in your audience, you have their attention, you are able to take them on this journey for however long your film is. A very good example I got from another filmmaker here on YouTube. He actually drew my attention to Lord of the Rings, which happens to be one of my favorite films, versus The Hobbit, and I would even throw in uh, Rings of Power. Lord of the Rings was shot on film, while The Hobbit was shot on digital. But you see, there's a certain longevity that has to do with Lord of the Rings. I mean, I probably watch Lord of the Rings at least twice every year, part one to three, especially part one. But I don't think I've watched The Hobbit twice since the first time that I saw it. And I mean, I saw one of it at BFI IMAX. I mean, come on, what better experience can you have than that? But I didn't care much to see it again. Same thing with Rings of Power. Yes, it was fun to see some of these names that we were hearing in Lord of the Rings, like Lumino and all those places. But aside from that, there is no inclination for me to want to watch those things again. But I still enjoy Lord of the Rings. Look at the Shire in Lord of the Rings and look at the Shire in The Hobbit. It's very subtle, but I think that subtleness, that's what filmmakers are looking for in the film look. So now, does this mean that we should make all our films look retro? Absolutely not. Now, there are different characteristics of the film look, of, you know, something that's shot on film. Three major ones, are, aside the film stock that it's actually filmed on, film grain, bloom and halation. Now, how much of these three, the intensity of these three and others that you introduce in your film is entirely up to you. If you crank all of them like really high, then you're going for complete classic retro vibes. But if you use them subtly and with intent, I think you will achieve the goal of getting that ageless, timeless, uh, now I feel like I'm about to start a gospel song. If you like this content, please take a moment to subscribe and drop a comment. Thank you. Another good comparison that I noticed for myself is within two TV shows, uh, Succession and Yellowstone. Yellowstone clearly has this super clean digital look, but compare that with Succession, which was also shot on digital. I will confirm that, sure. But the image has clearly been put through some form of film emulation because the halation in Succession, you can't miss it. It's there, it's in your face. And there's a little bit of film grain as well and a little bit of bloom. Now, look at them side by side. Which of them looks more like film and which of them evokes an emotion? Yup, succession. So I put it to you that film emulation is that secret sauce that will make your footage look ageless and timeless and i'm joking there are so many other things that come into play to make it to make something look cinematic and have that film look and so finally before i shut up and end this video how can you achieve the same look does this mean that you have to go and get a film camera and start learning how to develop celluloid film stock by yourself absolutely not that's where presets and plugins and even lots come into play 
and there are so many of them including tutorials here on YouTube how you can take your digital footage and introduce some of this film grain and halation and bloom as well and a number of them are pretty good I have used quite a lot after effects tutorials third party plugins I've used lots and they are you know there are some really good ones out there but I can honestly tell you that by the time you've tried out a number of these ones like I have you will start to notice that some of them are just better than the other ones for example the bloom there are some tutorials and some plugins that it will basically just add a glow to the highlights but there are some that when you actually apply the bloom it goes beyond just the highlights it finds a way to interact with the luma and even the reflections like basically some of these plugins some of these lots are a lot better than the rest in how accurate and how reliable um, they produce this film look that we're looking for and one of them that i can recommend is the hansa it has a crazy amount of film stuff i'm seeing some names that I haven't seen before. I think the thing I love the most about the answer is that bloom. You know, personally for me, in terms of the film look, I don't care that much for film grain. I don't care that much for halation, but you see bloom, I love it. How it handles the highlights. Now, I'm sure some of you are like, look, are you sure they did not pay you to say this? And nobody paid me to say anything. In fact, if you look back at the Anicola Paul color grade video you would actually see that i used the dehancer plugin so i've been using the plugin way before they contacted me but that being said i am part of their affiliate program so if you do decide to pick up uh, the plugin for yourself then you know just use the promo code look air and you will get 10 percent off of your purchase no money exchange hands they did not pay me for this review and i'm not obligated to say anything i mean it's quite pricey to be honest for what it does which is probably why you should use the promo code look air when you're buying it if you decide but that's aside it, it really is a nice plugin and i genuinely enjoy using it and they also have an app by the way so you can actually take your photos and take your videos on your mobile phone having that theme emulation right into it on the go which is pretty it's pretty interesting and the app is actually free uh, at least for a limited uh, amount i think you're only allowed to export about 10 or 15 images and then after that you now have to uh, pay for subscriptions i actually did a very brief color grade for a friend's film and i used the hansa on it and some of the issues on the film was the highlights were were quite blown out and the way the hansa just the roll off on the high mm, just gave it that timeless i hate that i keep using that word i was watching it and i had to remind myself that wait oh, this is a film that was shot last year on red why is it looking like this was shot on like a 16 millimeter film or a 35 millimeter film you know so for me the best part of the answer is the bloom but you know it also has film grain which is amazing it also has halation which is amazing especially if we are going for the succession look then the halation is definitely something that we're going to enjoy using so you could go gentle with it or you could go crazy retro with it so you have the same footage and you have the ability to do succession and you have the ability to do yellowstone so if this video has been helpful to you then you should definitely go check out my other video where i replicated or i tried to replicate the color grade of a film called anikulapo which was shot on digital but actually went through film emulation and i actually spoke with a real colorist that did uh, the film so yeah you should definitely um, go check out that video all right see ya